Well, once again, we got two converges, a really old one, number 16, which is the Marisai. Yeah, I'm probably not pronouncing that right. And I already reviewed a Giradoga before, but I don't think I reviewed number 136. I'll show you the other Giradogas later on. So going on time here, we'll just start with the earlier release here. We got fandom as usual. Let me focus back here. It is a second generation mobile suit. It was uh, shown in Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, which I have not seen any episodes of. So basically it was based off of a Hi-Zac, and it has some low atmospheric flight capabilities, but it's lighter and stuff like that. Alright, so... <clears throat> Boy, this would probably be from Pound... I mean, probably from the original Wave number 3 if they released it in 5 or 6 patterns, but I can't, I can't remember for sure. Anyways, it's 2011, so this thing is quite old now. And uh, let's see, in this wave, we have uh, these other ones here. Okay, it's kind of weak that they would have these two. Right, they're almost identical. Anyways, general stats are there. Uh, okay, let me close out this window. I found two images off that website. And... Ugh, boy, uh, I am curious what 2011 gum is going to look like, though. Ah, oh, that's a letdown. I thought it was going to be a lot worse than that. Oh well. And then we're going to have the standard bag thing with the uh, really silly clear foot stand. It's very vibrantly colored. Even to my naked eye, the, the camera, my phone is going to make it look even brighter. But even to my naked eye, it's a really bright orange. Almost like a hazard orange. Yeah, foot stand. Waste of, waste of plastic. Let's look at the uh, torso first here. Get the arms off. Oh, pleasantly, they're not stuck with paint either. Pretty weak foot details on the bottom. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't mold more details in there, but uh, the lower legs have nice details, slots and uh, dots and stuff. Very cool. Uh, two little thrusters on the side of the feet area, or the ankles. And you can see a gunmetal here for the back of the knee, which is really nice. Nice details here again. We have a nice contrasting green here. And then this is like a dark, yeah, darker red. But this orange is really, yeah, it's orange. Okay, uh, um... Yeah, okay, it seems to be a pattern of three stripes, you know, slots or something like that is the theme on this design. Alright, let's see what else we have here. So this uh, left arm, we have an orange, red, and the hand is just molded in, painted gray, not even not a metallic gray either. There's a hole here, so we'll have to see what goes in there. Yep, the other arm, there's a peg hole there. Three slots and dots again. And uh, it must be a separate hand, probably. That hand is probably attached to the weapon. I've never seen this weapon before. Okay, I guess this probably folds out on a more realistic model. Okay, so the hand's there, but I like that the orange is nicely painted. So that brings bring this side all together. Alright. Cool little jetpack thruster backpack thing. Uh, with some green hoses again. And some nice uh, intake vent grill details. Alright, so it's going to peg into the back. Very tight fit on that. Very good. And then we have a shoulder shield. Now this is rigid plastic. It's not, it's not PVC, so if it falls from a high distance, I think it will break. There's an L shape here, so... I don't know why though. It's symmetric. Why don't they just... If it was a circle, they could let you spin it around, you know? Some articulation for free, but no, it's just gonna be that way and no articulation. Okay, so then I guess this is like an extra spike for the other shoulder. Yeah. Now that's kind of a loose fit. Oh boy, that's actually. That could actually poke you. That could actually probably make you bleed. So looking at the helmet here, it's that orange again with the nice contrasting green, and it looks like we just have a green metallic painted mono eye. So I'm going to guess you can actually maybe take this apart and move that eye. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Maybe some paint is stuck. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I like it. Just off of it a little bit. 
So that's nice. T-shaped peg. Okay, now we got the rigid plastic antennae. Keep that. Bear in mind, being rigid, if it falls, it's going to break. Yeah, it's really, really thin and delicate. I'm going to glue that in place later. I feel it's too loose. So again, no round peg for the neck, which is a real shame. Lost opportunity for articulation, seeing how it wouldn't probably collide with the shoulders anyways. But nope, they just want it to be straightforward. And it's really gappy too. Like There's a lot of air going underneath there. I can't... That's weak. Well, it's a really early in the converged line, so still, it's pretty neat. Uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting the orange to be that bright. It's it's not as bright as what you're seeing, probably though. My phone tends to make colors look a lot more vibrant. I've already spoken about the Gear Doga in the other video, so I'm not gonna talk about it. But in here we have Wave Pound 03. So after the first 20 waves, the boxes weren't labeled, right? So this might be wave 3, but it's not labeled that way. After the first 20 waves, it came out with another wave, starting with pound numbers. So this is really wave 23. But anyways, it's from 2016. And the other robots in that, that wave were these guys here. Okay, and they're the basic stats of the robot. And I got this because I have another Giradoga that came with a second head. And I'm suspecting it goes on this one, but I, I might be mistaken. We'll have to see. So after the first 20 waves, they went to a logical peg stand. It's interesting. There's no gum. Uh, it was opened. Maybe the previous owner took the gum out so I don't get sick. Really delicate antenna it looks like there. Okay. Ooh, yeah, right. Gun and some weapons for the shield. I think they're like uh, grenades or something that go into the shield. So here's the base. Alright, it's got a peg and so the foot has a corresponding hole. Makes more sense. I'll just quickly go over this. It's the same mold as the one I reviewed before. The one I reviewed before it had printing on the sleeves. Otherwise, uh, it's just a uh, color tone difference. But it's a really cool design for from the Gundam universe. And just a lot of cool details. It reminds me of like a World War II kind of soldier or something with these helmets. Nice little purplish metallic eye. Alright, so, well, you can see here this is just like a standard helmet. And you can have even a, a lamer helmet, I guess. Just a rounded helmet. Whereas this one's a little more technical looking and then I'm gonna guess this last helmet is like a commander helmet maybe uh, hold on, let me peg that in we got the antenna actually the front end of this first helmet goes into that this newer third variant like that and then we got this dark green shield for this shoulder side here and then the weapon, yeah, there you go. It's interesting looking, kind of, not sure if it's a pistol or an SMG or what. It's got a round uh, handle. Some of these have squarish handles, but that one is round. And then the shield is really nice. And now this shield is PVC. It's quite flexible, which is nice. I don't have a fear of breaking it. It's got the chassis number in it and the Xeon logo. And then these things kind of peg into these squares. Although I really would recommend that you glue them because they're pretty shallow squares. You can see there's only that much plastic getting into that hole. So I feel like they're going to fall off. So then the, that goes on this arm here. And so that's what it looks like. Okay, let me get the other ones and we'll see about that helmet. Alright, since this developed from the Hyzak, I have number 119 in the converged lineup. It is the Hyzak. So let's see what resemblances there are. Uh, I guess some resemblances. Not, I don't know. It looks kind of like they both look like Zaku's, really. Alright, so the Giradogas, let's see. This is the sleeves version I was talking about, number 256. 
and it just has a black and white printing on the sleeves. This is when I decided to leave the plane helmet on. Go this way. And then I have this number 142, the Doga Resin, or Resin, I'm not sure. Got the commander helmet on this one. Now I believe it was this figure that came with an extra helmet. So, and that helmet is this, which is kind of like an old, looks like a Spartan, I don't know, medieval helmet or something. So, the question is, will it fit on this, this figure here? Well, it'll fit, but is it the same color? Yes, it is the same color. So, I guess it's nice that they went back after this first one was released in, in release number 142 they gave you this fourth helmet option here the original three and so you can really mix them up you know like I now have three Giradogas with three different helmets uh, I guess I could yeah you could buy a fourth one and still have four variations of the head but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that because then the bodies will be all the same but if they come out with a fourth version with a different ah no it'd have to be this green color yeah never mind I guess I'm stuck with this and that's fine by me uh, I'm going to pop out this number 221 which is a Zaku FZ and uh, that's it for today I guess Hopefully those have spun around enough. One thing you may catch back here, I didn't catch in the first review of the Giradoga. The little spikes on the shield turned out, turn out to be guns. I thought they were like grenade launchers or smoke dischargers. But uh, that image tells me that they're lasers or something. Freaking lasers. Alright, let's get rid of these other, other guys. Okay, that's it for today. So now we know that you need to buy Converge number 142 to uh, give that fourth view to number 136. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next Converge video.